All right, so here we have the Ferrum Forge uh, Pro Series 2 Archbishop. I'm going to be doing a uh, quick disassembly video here for you. So let's get to it. All right, so we've got ourselves what looks like T6 and T8, T6 and T8. Luckily, I already have these uh, implements of destruction preloaded so we can go ahead I'll, I always take the uh, take the, the clip off first all right so there we have our clip again those are t6 and t8 screws all right clip done backspacer careful not to strip these guys uh, they did not provide any extras when they sent the knife. So, be cautious when disassembling. Alright, now we'll get the other side. These guys here. Take them out. There and there. And then next, all we really need to do is pay attention to that pivot screw. Uh, they used a little bit of what it looks like here. They used some uh, some blue Loctite on there to keep those safely secured in. All right, so with any luck, this sucker isn't going to spin on me. And it'll just come apart nice and easy, and I won't need to load another one another one in. Wait a second here. Could it be? What's this? Oh! <laughs> uh, wrong one. Uh, where is my... Oh, there it is. That was a T10. Here's my... Here's my 8. Okay, and it looks like with the help of my silicone mat as a stabilizer on the other side, I was able to get that apart without loading another T8 into another uh, into another driver. Whoop! Careful when you're pulling that apart. Where'd that thing go? Oh, there it is. It's one of the sleeves that goes inside of that backspacer there. Uh, we managed to get it. We got ourselves some ball bearing in there. As you can see, it's a nice tight, uh, milled titanium uh, backspacer. Um, quite light, quite well milled. And, and that was one of the things that got away from me just now. Uh, they slide in here. They're just sleeves, threaded sleeves uh, for the backspacer. So I'm just going to take those out of there so I don't pick it up by accident and have one of them run away on me again. Put those up there. We can then remove the blade and we can remove... I've already had this apart once. Hence the, uh, hence the little bit of oil you're seeing here. Uh, when it came, it didn't have any oil on it. So the action was good, uh, but I wouldn't say the action was great right out of the box. It, it, was, it was quite good, though. And they also have those uh, uh, a second set of washers in there uh, for the uh, other side of the ball bearings to glide around. We'll get those out so we can do a proper, proper cleaning. Okay. Loose. There's one. And there's two. As you can see, uh, I have had this thing apart and I threw some of my uh, KPL lube in there. Uh, so that's... That's why we've got a little bit of a sheen on the mat and a little bit of sheen on some of my metal parts here. Um, but we will nevertheless endeavor to do a full and complete job. 
cleaning this blade. Give it the attention that it duly deserves. So I just uh, I, I get these, um, they're blue shop towels you can get at uh, Home Depot or Canadian Tire, well Canadian Tire here I imagine be something different down in the States like a Lowe's or a something something like that hardware store just go to a hardware store and you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to find these uh, little blue shop towels and uh, kind of paper towel roll I cut them up into smaller sections just so they're easier to uh, easier to deal with and I'm not having to unfold a um, <laughs> what sometimes seems like a map size uh, map size piece of fabric for something is something smaller than a dime so cutting this shop towel up is definitely uh it's come in it's come in helpful and it extends the life of my shop towels not a rich man so i got to take care of my knives just so all right we'll clean this up like this and we'll get some of the alcohol out. Some of my 99% isopropanol. A little dipperoo in there. And we'll get this. We'll get this pivot done. Get that all cleaned up. Get that all cleaned up like that. And uh, luckily. As you can see, because it's 99%, it dries really quick, which is kind of the reason I bought it. I don't need to wait very long for after application for it to be uh, for it to be completely dried up and gone. And then I can start applying lubrication into the places that require a lubrication and then I can start putting this bad boy back together I'm gonna see if I can do it the right way this time I put the clip on the wrong side last time and I had my buddy sitting next to me laughing at me the whole time while I was doing it so let's see if I can not do that again so we'll get uh, our lubrication Now I put a little bit, just a couple dollops in here, not for really any other reason than it uh, it provides uh, these washers here something to kind of stick to, so you can put them in and not have them fall out whenever you move this, uh, whenever you move move it around, kind of. has an adhesive quality to it. So then we will plug in our computer is what we're going to do before it dies. Bear with me here, I'm dying. And which one do I unplug? We'll unplug the drain. There. And there. Apologies. I should have been better prepared. Okay, back to the disassembly. Get our stuff kind of... So that's all the bits and... That's all the bits and pieces of our uh, of our archbishop here try and get it somewhat centered uh all right so what are we going to do here uh i want my 85 85 weight nano oil to go on here so that's your so that's your nano so that's your nano oil there
Nano Oil 85. It's thick. But again, I like to use this this thicker stuff here on the on the pivot because that's the part of the knife that sees the most action. Um, so I like that stuff on there because it, it lasts longer than the uh, than the less viscous uh, oils, the lighter weight ones. We need a heavyweight on there. So then we can just put that through there like so. And I generally like to kind of move it around a bit just so everything's kind of so everything's kind of lubricated. That didn't sound good. We got some tight tolerances, it would appear. Some tight, tight tolerances. So we'll just add a little bit more lubrication. And let that kind of, ooh, that was a pretty good dollop there. Pretty good dollop. All right. So, yeah, that was a little more than I was planning on administering. So we'll just use that as the lube for the bottom part of this row of bearings and I'll get the stop pin in there because I often forget the stop pin until it's too late and give myself a quick little whack on the forehead and go back and get it just put a little bit here because that's where the blade is contacting we'll pop that sucker on there like that and then just apply a little bit right here. Okay, and then that ball bearing, captured ball bearing washer. And then this one here will just a uh, little bit of lube around in on there like that. And let's not forget our backspacer with our sleeves. There we go. That's just pops in there like that. All right. So now we've got ourselves basically a knife half reassembled. So now we can just go ahead and put this in. And that just kind of snaps into place and then we will do our very best put these handle screws in first where's my where'd my t6 run to there it is all right so pop these t6s in first Uh, and this one here, like so, quite easily done. I wouldn't, uh, if, if you're going to screw this thing back together, or going to screw anything back together, really, and uh, you encounter some resistance when you're first starting to screw the screw back in, uh, don't, don't try and force it. I, I know I'm probably telling you things that you already know, but... Uh, I, I remember I got a Rayat new torrent, and um, I don't know what I was thinking. I thought it was a friction point or something. Um, and day one, day freaking one, I wound up stripping a screw. Now, to Rayat's um, credit, when I emailed them and told them, yeah, I was a bit of a dummy, 
and uh, when I was uh, taking the knife apart uh, and uh, putting it back together again, I made a bit of a boo-boo, and uh, yeah, I got uh, I stripped a standoff. Um, they were more than happy uh, to ship me new parts, and all they all they asked uh, on my part was, "Hey." Can you pay the shipping? To which I said, of course, I can pay the shipping. And in a relatively short amount of time, I'd say it probably took them uh, maybe two weeks. Now, that's not the shipping from China, mind you. Uh, so it took them about two weeks to get me my new standoff screws. And they sent me extras, which was very nice of them. We don't often... Okay, so... Pay attention, buddy. Uh, we don't often see that nowadays with uh, with some of these companies. All right, so here's the thing that you're going to want to pay attention to. These are clip screws. Notice one is quite a bit longer than the other. That is because one just goes into the frame. I don't know if you can see it or not here. One of the screws just goes into the, the, the frame of it here. And the other one also goes into the back spacer. So when you're putting, uh, when you're putting the clip on, the long screw goes in the top, okay? Otherwise, you've got a screw sticking into the uh, area where the blade is going to come to rest when it's not deployed. And that could definitely mess up your edge, mess up your screws. It would essentially, it'll mess up your day. It, it is just a, a not nice thing to happen. So to avoid not nice things, make sure the longer screw is uh, reinserted into the top position rather than the bottom and here we are so that is the clip that is the handle scales now i did apply blue loctite uh, i did apply blue loctite to the pivot when, uh, when i put it in um, ooh, I might have been a little too liberal with that. Just get in there and do a little bit of cleaning. So, zero blade wiggle. Whoa, that's so fall shutty. It just bounced open again. And there you have it. That is the Ferrum Forge um, disassembly and maintenance uh, video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. And, uh, Enjoy your knife, okay? Have a great day. Bye-bye.